Inside Out 2 is in the spotlight. We have movie man Eric Childress on the scene for us for some movies and money. Hi, Angie. Eric, is it true this film is starting to rival Barbie? Yeah, this is one of those moments for all the chicken littles out there, recognizing that all those excuses for why people weren't going to movies were moot when all it takes is something they all want to go see. Disney Pixar's Inside Out 2 just became the seventh film in history to gross $100 million in its second weekend. That is an extraordinary achievement, especially when last week it seemed like we might actually have a film match the strength of last year's Super Mario Brothers movie, but now it looks like we may have one that matches Barbie. That's right. Inside Out 2 ended last weekend $4 million ahead of Barbie's pace after 10 days and had a second weekend that was nearly $8 million higher. A big weekend is ahead at the theater with a double debut, Kevin Costner's epic Western Horizon and A Quiet Place Day One. Here's the new Quiet Place. Shelter in place. Awaiting further instruction. We can help each other. We have to get out of the city. set the stage for these two films and will either take down Inside Out 2 from that top spot? The answer on Horizon is no. As for A Quiet Place Day 1, I think the odds may be up against it, which is not to say that it will not have a good weekend. The 35% drop that Inside Out 2 had last week is likely not going to be affected much by audiences going for horror or westerns. And I would think anything over $50 million will be plenty for Pixar to retain the top spot for a third straight week. A Quiet Place would then finish with likely a decent second place number, and that $47 million was a big deal. But this is a prequel rather than a continuation. Audiences show they would rather go forward than backwards with Furiosa, but I'd still expect this to open in the $35 to $45 million range. A Kevin Costner's Horizon and American Saga Part 1, on the other hand, is going to be dependent on those pesky adults making an effort. Nothing about this seems like a winning strategy. History has shown that knowledge of part twos weakens a part one showing since many will just wait for home viewing and then maybe show up for part two later, especially with this one scheduled in just seven weeks. And despite the big state innovation reported at Khan, reviews have not been great for his latest directorial effort. On top of that, Warner Brothers chose not to screen the film for critics outside of New York and Los Angeles. So this feels more like a coast saga rather than an American one. This week, your recommendation is dedicated to Western fans. In lieu of Warner Brothers not allowing press in most of the country a chance to see the first part of Kevin Costner's purported American saga, you can sit right at home and see one of the greatest Westerns of all time on either Amazon or Paramount+. Plus. The film is Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West. 55 years later, the film is still a sprawling examination of an expanding America, complete with land barons and gunmen still trying to carve out a piece for themselves while trying to restrict those without power at the time, especially women, represented by Claudia Cardinale in a terrific performance as she has to navigate the power plays around her by men played by Charles Bronson, Jason Robards, and Henry Fonda in one of the all-time great villain performances. The film has everything you want in a Western, from great shootouts, tough guy dialogue, gorgeous cinematography, and of course, Ennio Morricone's brilliant score. This is actually my favorite Western of all time, and it seems to get lost while people remember Clint Eastwood's collaborations with Leone from this period. But as three-hour American sagas go, this is as good as it gets. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Angie. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.